The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your almsgiving may be in secret. And your father, who sees in secret, will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners, so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, Go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden, and your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps as a result of the President's Mardi Gras talk last night, I, for the first time, really noticed how military the opening prayer is, the collect prayer for uh, Ash Wednesday. And while I'm not very comfortable with using military uh, imagery for religious purposes, perhaps there is something to be said for beginning our Lent with this, um, with an understanding of spiritual warfare. Because that spiritual warfare is not against some kind of outside powers seeking to get us nearly so much as what's inside of us that wants to divide us. Remember the word devil and diabolical comes from division. It means that which separates, that which divides us, that which splits us in half, that which shatters, fragments us. And that's what we're doing battle with during Lent. And the main weapon for that battle is given to us in the opening prayer, self-restraint. Perhaps this is the time to focus on cultivating that particular virtue of self-restraint as the counter to the diabolical, separating tendencies of those classically named um, seven deadly sins. The tendencies in us that really are the root of all that divides us from God, divides us from one another, and divides us even within ourselves. So the refrain that Jesus uses here in the Gospel is, don't be like the hypocrites, do internally in secret what must be done 
and leave the rest up to God the Father. He repeats hypocrites three times. And that tempts us to look at others and say, you know that old saying, oh, I'm so glad, Father, thank you, Father, that I'm not like this person. And I don't think he intends us to, uh, to look at others and uh, with labels like hypocrites. I think he does intend us to look inside of ourselves because if hypo hypocrisy is anything, it is an internal division, an internal dividedness. Um, and it's sort of a double life. It's a kind of double life that uh, our Holy Father speaks against very often. Uh, you know, professing one thing with our lips but actually living in a very, very different way. And um, uh, Lent perhaps is a time to come to terms with that inside of ourselves. Now, one of the ways of coming to terms with that inside of ourselves is creating an emptiness within which we can deal with it. I think that's fasting. And the second way of, of um, getting outside of ourselves is um, almsgiving, of course. Uh, focusing on the other, putting the other, the needs of the other first before our own. And then the third, of course, is prayer. And that is putting God first. And um, putting God first in the priority of our usage of what is one of the greatest of his gifts, time. And so those are the three pillars of not only our Lenten practice, but of our entire um, commitment and lives as disciples of Jesus Christ.